All right. Uh, you've probably seen me use um, Arduinos on some projects, and here's my box of Arduino parts. Uh, I've got uh, uh, some Nanos, some Mini Pros, Tiny 85, some bare chips and stuff, some uh, resonators and things. Uh, I've got some STM32s, which I haven't used. I, th I thought I was going to like that board, and I don't. Um, I don't like the... Uh, I don't like the fiddliness of programming it. You have to keep moving jumpers back and forth and use an external programmer. And they're just, they're just a, they're really fast, but I just don't, I don't find them all that useful. So they just kind of sit over here. Um, the, the, the nanos are kind of my go-to uh, Arduino. I really like the form factor. They have a connector for programming. I have programmed, uh, made some projects with the, uh, uh, the pros. You have to have an external programmer. It's okay if you, if you just want to, do it once and these are a little easier for development they're not all that much bigger so I, I just kind of tend to use these and it used to be that these were a little bit cheaper but now they're about the same price so I, I just use the nanos um, so, so uh, um, I'm probably late to the game uh, I don't really put a lot of effort into uh, uh, programmable devices um, and uh, there are some new ones out uh, this is a uh, uh, this is an uh, 104, uh, kind of a cool part. I actually got the actual ICE development kit for Arduino, for um, uh, Atmel parts and stuff, and I've done some stuff. So, you know, um, here's some AT85s. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about a new part today that um, has been out not too long. So you may have heard of it. Um, some of you can just tune out now if you, if you know what this thing is. Um, and it is uh, uh, what uh, Adafruit is calling the QT Pi. So QT Pi. And uh, it is a tiny, tiny, tiny little board. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Um, it is a USB-C, which is, which is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, but it has a so it has uh, onboard programming, so you don't have to have an external programmer. You can just use this, and um, you know it is it is super tiny. Um, let's see here, compared to a nano. So here here's a nano, and here's the Pi. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's half the oh, it's half the size. So it's it's a uh, it's a nice part. So like I said, it's got uh, programmable, so you just plug it in and you can program it with the Arduino uh, IDE. Um, it has, it just has one chip. So that one chip handles the USB, handles everything. Um, it's got a little uh, connector here that's I squared C, so you can daisy chain a bunch of together, things together. You can buy different modules and stuff from, uh, from Adafruit. I find they're a little bit expensive, but um, if you want to, uh, do development without having to solder or just uh, as a learning tool uh, for somebody just getting started in it. It's a really nice way to learn and you can plug the modules on a display or a temperature gauge or things like that. A whole bunch of things you can plug onto that. A stemma I think is what this this thing is what this thing is called. But anyway, I wanted to talk, up, talk about this board be, because I think it'll be really valuable to t for the types of things that I'm interested in. And those are hardware based things and not software based things, not kind of easy little projects. I kind of want, you know, hardware based projects. So let me show you the pin out of this thing. So there's a competing product. Uh, I think this one actually came out first. This is the Seed uh, uh, Zhao uh, X, X, I, X, A, I, O, I think. Zhao, if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. X, X, I, A, O. X, I, A, O. Zhao. Um, and uh, these are pin compatible, okay? So they're the exact same chip and they are pin compatible. So you can either get this part or get this part and uh, either one's gonna work just fine. Now, this one has a little bit more going for it. They both have USB-C. Um, uh, this one has an LED like the regular D13 LED as, as in most Arduinos. This board has a NeoPixel on it, okay? Uh, way down and there's a NeoPixel, which is red, green, and blue. And you can program that with a Neo library and make any color you want. And so it's, 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 it's more fun. It's not as easy as just writing a high or a low. You have to, you have to program a little bit to, to get it to work. But um, it is cool because you can change the intensity, you can change the color. It's three, three colors RGB. You can really give a lot of information 
In fact, uh, a lot of the native software in this thing uses that, and they flash different codes with different colors to tell you what's going on and stuff. So, so, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, the uh, pinout, like I said, it's the same. So let's take a look at the pinout. Um, uh, you can bring in 5 volts. It is a 3.3 volt device. So that's the one negative thing about this. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this is that the chip is 3.3, which means that all the data lines are 3.3. So it's not 5 volt compatible. And it says that you will damage the part if you put 5 volts out here. So um, it's not 5 volt compatible. That's the one downside. Okay. So you can bring in 5 volts. There is a regulator on here that gives you 3.3. So uh, you bring in 5, it gives you 3.3. Uh, if you hook up the USB, uh, that's 5 volts, and it gives you 3.3. Okay, so anyway, it operates at 3.3 ground. All right, so then it's color-coded. So there are a bunch of analog pins. So A0 through A10 are all analog pins. So what is an analog pin? Well, there is a built-in A to D. So, like I said, I'm really interested in this for hardware applications. It's got an A to D built in, and it's multiplex, so you can use any pin as an input. I think with uh, maybe A0 and A1 don't, anyway, there's, there's a couple of pins that don't work. Most of the pins um, have analog output, uh, input, and it is a 12-bit A to D. That's really cool. A 12-bit A to D on a multiplex device. That's that's super cool. So you can have all kinds of voltage inputs on this thing, and it can read them at 12-bit 12, 12 resolution. But the thing that I find really fascinating about this is it has a DAC. It's the first part I've ever seen that has an actual DAC in it, a real DAC. It's a 10-bit DAC, so 12-bit A to D, 10-bit DAC. But it's a true DAC. Uh, that's really, really nice. This is going to be really good for a lot of things that I want to build. Okay, so we've got the analog pins in orange, the digital pins in green. Uh, so you've got uh, uh, 11 digital pins. And then some of the pins are special duty. So uh, just like on the Arduinos, uh, A4 and A5 are the I squared C, SDA, SCL. Uh, this one has uh, A6 and A7 as transmit receive. It has these three pins as SPI. Um, and so uh, it is really nice. It's got all, all everything you want to have built into it. So negatives, 3.3. Uh, and the other negative is it's got a very, very small amount of memory. It only has 47K. Um, so it's not great. <laughs> now, it does have the option, this board has the option uh, on the back side of the board uh, to add a fla more flash. So you can add two, me uh, two megabits of flash. And uh, I've got some parts on order to solder them onto here. And I'm going to see if that uh, solves all the problems that I have. I, I hear it does. Um, as if you have that part on the back, then, it, then, it, then it's a nice thing. Um, Adafruit does have other uh, boards. Uh, I think they're called Feathers. Um, and they have a lot of memory on them and everything. They're bigger boards. They're $20, though. Uh, this is $6. That's the other, cool, the other cool thing about why I'm so excited about this thing. It's $6. Uh, it's got a NeoPixel. It's got, it's all programmable. It, it's $6. It's really great. It's got, it's got a, a, a D to A and an A to D. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. So, uh, so this is cool. So let me show you um, uh, uh, one pro. Oh, the other thing I should mention is that it, you can put headers on it. Okay, so it's got uh, uh, holes and it's got headers in it, but it also has uh, castellations on the side. So uh, the bottom's flat. So if you don't have that chip loaded on the bottom, it's flat. You could put it on a uh, a PC board that was laid out correctly, and you could solder this onto the PC board. So if you wanted to do that. Uh, I doubt that I would do that. I would just use the uh, I would just use the headers. So let me show you a, a circuit that I've put together just just so you get an idea of it. Uh, let me change the camera a bit, and I need to find a USB uh, power cord here, and uh, we'll get it we'll get it running. Okay, I have it hooked up. So I've got headers on it, and I put it on a, a proto board over here, so you can kind of see it's uh, it's over here. Uh, the little NeoPixel is glowing green, saying it's it's uh, it's happy, and um, that just gives you kind of status. Now, uh, the programming environment for this thing is either the Arduino IDE, and there are libraries that support this chip that you can get, um, or most people are using um, uh, CircuitPython. 
And so the program that I wrote here is in CircuitPython, so I'm having to learn Python. Um, I really like Python. It uh, seems like a really nice language. So anyway, so I wrote this in Python, and there are a bunch of libraries for this particular chip. And uh, it's pretty strange programming. It uh, When you connect this thing to your PC, it shows up as a, as a USB drive. It shows up uh, in Windows as a, you know, drive G or something. And um, you just take the program that you've written, a text file, you can actually use Notepad, and you can drop that text file into the USB drive, and it runs. Immediately, it runs. It's, uh, you, you, you download a uh, Python environment onto the chip, and then these text files you call main.py. And if you put a main.py on there, when it wakes up, it looks for main, it sees main and just executes the program, and it's a text. So uh, it stays text, it's an interpretive language, it's not a compiled language. And so it tends to be a bit on the slow side. So that's another negative about using um, a Python. If you use Arduino, it's all compiled down and it's, and it's, it's just as fast, I think, or vast, faster than an Arduino because this is a faster processor. Um, but the uh, Python does seem to be a bit on the slow side. Okay, so what am I demoing here? Well, first of all, I'm demoing a uh, display. So I'm using the I squared C lines of the, uh, of the Kitty Pie over here. And uh, the pull-up resistors are on the, uh, on the OLED display. So I just need two wires and I'm done. And um, there is a uh, driver already in uh, CircuitPython uh, Circuit for, for the OLED display. So it just, it just works immediately. That's great. And you just do a print command. You say print, 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 and away you go. Um, the other thing that I'm demoing here is the DAC. Okay, so the DAC comes out of A0, and I've got A0 coming into this LED. And if you've noticed, this LED is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And uh, it, it's stepping between uh, 30,000 bit count to uh, 65,000 bit count. So it's, it's going uh, through a bunch of uh, values and outputting it. So it's not PWM, it's actually a output voltage going into the LED and there it ramps up again. So it's counting, counting up and then it starts over again and then counting up so you can see the LED starting to go, to go again. Um, and I'm stepping it. Uh, a, a 1024 each time. So each step is 1024 and it's just getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Okay, so I'm showing that the, the output works just fine. And then I'm taking that output and feeding it, so that, com that comes out on A0. I'm feeding that over to A1. A1 I have configured as an input pin and it's going into that 12-bit A to D. The 12-bit A to D then shows up here as volts. And so uh, I take the bit value coming there and I divide it by 65,000, and that gives me a range of zero to one. I multiply that by 3.3, that's full scale, and that gives me volts. So, so I'm reading out the actual volts that the LED is seeing. So the reason I'm ramping from 30,000 to 65,000, not zero, is that the VF of the LED, I need to start higher up in, in, in voltage. So I'm, I'm uh, ramping it right where the LED is starting to turn on. And then, um, yeah, so you can see the voltage going up, 1.78, 1.92. Those are, those are the 10, 24 step, steps. And then it has a timer, so I'm just displaying the time. So every time, uh, every time the LED goes through one cycle, it increments the amount of time it's been on, right? So it's been on for, uh, for four minutes. And uh, if I, if I discon if, well, I'll just hit the reset button. If I, if I reset it, uh, it starts over with seconds and show it'll show you how many seconds have elapsed and then if it's greater than 60 it changes over to minutes if it's greater than uh, 3600 it goes over to hours um, so it's all, all written at, like I said all written in Python but anyway just to give you a flavor uh, this is the very first thing I've ever done with this uh, with this new part uh, I'm using the I squared C I'm using the the DAC output I'm using the uh, A to C A to D input um, and uh, programming in uh, Circuit Python, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff, a uh, whole bunch of stuff to learn. And, and like I said, I really, really like it. I hope that by adding the flash memory, it'll make it more usable. Um, but if you haven't seen it before, it's pretty cool. It's six dollars. I think it's worth a look.